的主，可以建为海气雷。At the beginning of the movie, we see an odd job worker named Quinn who lives in a coffin house. One day he was going to work when he sees an accident on a road and gets late for his work. He gets into an argument with his supervisor. So the supervisor there fires him from the job. He then starts working in a restaurant but the owner there is not happy with him. We then see him giving food to a girl, but his owner thinks he is slacking, which makes her angry, and she too fires him from the job saying that only ghosts will hire him. Now Quinn gets very disturbed by all this and he often used to talk to his dolls. He tells them that it's truly sad to have no money and asks if is it true only ghosts would hire him. He then takes out a bundle of newspapers in which he finds an article about the grave of the tycoon's wife dug out. And we see the same girl here with him. Now out of desperation to pay rent, he breaks into a columbarium at night, where we see a spirit following him. He then starts breaking the columbarium niche of a dead man named Chu Winkit who died recently and steals his funerary urns, leaving behind a ransom note for the relatives to contact and pay him to get back the urns. He then steals many more funerary urns and during this time that spirit is continuously following him. Then he comes back to his house and he has stolen a total of three funerary urns which he keeps on a shelf. He then tells that girl that everyone struggles hard for a place and he is sure their heirs would buy their urns. He then starts praying and only then does his phone ring. The person from the other end says they don't want the urn and asks him to do whatever he wants. Now in frustration, Quinn flushes the ashes out of an urn and we again see a spirit in his flat. After this, he falls asleep on his bed, and then someone starts banging on the door and asks if he has a place here for him to stay. The other voice says she is temporarily staying on a shelf in a coffin shop. Suddenly Quinn wakes up and says he can only sleep in the coffin room. He tried so hard to sneak into a place and he doesn't even know them. So how can he let them stay without a reason? Then he hits the door with his hammer. After which all those voices stop and when he tries to look outside, the spirit haunts him, fearing that he falls down. He then throws his hammer out and all the spirits run away. Only then he gets a call and the person from the other end says he wants to get the urn back. He then meets the man who called him at the restaurant, who gives him the money in exchange for the urn and asks him to check the money. The man asks him as he steals urns, Ain't he not scared of ghosts? To which he says there is nothing scary about ghosts. But he is scared of living in poverty. During this, we see that man clicks his picture. After which he vanishes from there. Only then he sees that man at the door and he remembers that it was the spirit of the same man to whom the urn belonged. We then see in a flashback that the man tries to talk to his wife on the phone. But his wife texts him saying she is busy. And then a car hits his car, killing him and it was the same accident that Quinn saw at the beginning of the movie. His wife was deeply saddened by his death and while keeping his urn in the columbarium niche, she had also kept his phone in it saying that she would wait for his call. Now taking back his urn, Kin in her wife's dream asks her to go to his shrine and take care. Here, when Quinn comes to his house, the money turns out to be fake, so he burns them in frustration, causing the firecrackers kept in his house to catch fire, and then his whole house starts burning. Quinn then comes out of his house burning and dies there. Here Kin's wife goes to his shrine where she finds his urn and sees that there is no phone inside it. She gets surprised to see the phone outside and asks the officer if they have a charger. And then she finds Quinn's photo in Kin's phone. After this, we see the souls of those two girls taking Quinn's soul with them. In the next story, we see a fortune teller named Ho, who can see ghosts and is retiring from his trade to spend more time with his wife and son. Then a note falls down from his table and he sees a ghost there who sits on the table in front of him. A bug then flies out of the ghost's eye, which Ho catches, and he asks her wife to not move. Then suddenly their friend Lane comes there and Ho's wife runs away out of fear. Later Chiung and his pregnant wife meet Ho and claim that she is being haunted by a ghost. Ho tells them when a person thinks she is seeing ghosts, most of the time it's merely a hallucination. But she tells him that she has been feeling a cold draft following her around for a few days. Now Ho remembers the ghost in the restaurant, and he asks them if they have been to the beach lately, because he smelled seawater when they came in just now. Chung says he taught a swimming class this morning, 
and only then his wife says she has been smelling seawater a lot these days, with some raw odor mixed in. Ho tells them that it's his last day on this job, and their case gonna take more than a couple of days to resolve. So he doesn't want to start something he can't finish. But he will refer them to Lan in the shop next door. Then he introduces them to Lan and when he comes back, there's a girl sitting at his shop. When he starts talking to the girl, he notices some strange things there, and that the girl is from the swim team. He asks him to tell her about her love life and will her boyfriend stay with her forever. He asks her to show him her left palm, but the girl hesitates and asks him to forget about it. He then asks her birthday and the time she was born, after which he sees that the girl is a ghost. He then asks her boyfriend's name, and the girl says it's Chun, and her name is Chen Siu Ting, and when he asks her the status of her relationship with Chun, the girl says she is bored and leaves there. She then comes outside Lin's shop to catch her attention and Lin comes out to check on her, and then Chiung and his wife come out and say they will wait for her at home, and Lan sees that that girl has vanished. Only then Ho calls her to his shop and tells her that girl was a ghost. She gets excited to know that she can see a ghost and Ho tells her it's the same one he bumped into this morning, and seems like she died from drowning. Now they think that Chiung is the coach of the school swim team and the girl is a member of a school swim team and she said her boyfriend's last name is Chu. If they confirm they were talking about the same school, they can connect the dots. Lam says she knows which school Chun teaches at and they can check if the girl's uniform matches. Now after some time, Lam tells Ho that the night before last they found a floater in the harbor, a girl between the age of 16 and 18 in a school uniform. She was rotting with her eyes pecked out by fish. Her name is Chen Siu Ting and she was three months pregnant. Lane then calls Chiung and asks him if the schoolgirl who had committed suicide is from his school, to which he says she was a student here. Here in the house, King's spirit haunts Miss S. Chiung. Later when Chiung reaches home, Lam and Ho also reach there, and Chiung tells them that he is not able to open the door. Lam says the ghost must be in there, and Ho asks him directly if he had an affair with a student who he got pregnant. So she jumped into the harbor and killed herself. Chiung says yes, and then Ho tells him that he saw that girl this morning and she had her left hand balled in a fist, to which Chiung says he doesn't know about this. Now Ho tries to talk to Ting and says he is not here for her. Miss S. Chiung took his son's CD by mistake, and he is only here to get it back. That CD means a lot to him and he needs it to get back together with his wife. Ting says if Chiung will come in with him she will kill his wife. Ho tells Lam that she can go in with him but she has to be nice to Ting as she is just a kid. Ting then opens the door and they see her sitting there combing her hair. Lam asks her if she can see Miss S. Chun, to which Ting says that she will live, but can't say the same about the one inside her. Lam then goes to check on Miss S. Chun, and Ho tries to keep Ting busy. Then he grabs Ting as soon as he gets the chance and writes something on her wrist to make open her fist, and they see love scribbled in it. Ting asks how it's decomposing, to which Ho asks her to think about it. Ting realizes that Chun never loved her, to which he explains that not all men are loyal. Chun can't even recall scribbling the word in her palm. Ting gets very sad to know this but Ho tells her that everything will be alright now. Lim then tells her that she has been dumped by boyfriends before too, and it feels like the end of the world. But if she asks her now, she should have dumped him ages ago. Ting then cries and says it's getting dark and she want to go, and then she vanishes from there. Ho then finally reaches the restaurant where his wife and son are waiting for him. Then after some time, Ho's wife goes to the washroom, and here his son reveals that he too can see ghosts. Ho gets worried and says he must have inherited it from him, but his son says it's good and gives him a ton of positive energy. Ho asks him if he told her mother about it, and then Ho's wife comes there and asks what they are talking about. His son asks him to tell her, but Ho says their son wants to learn Chinese instruments. Now in the next story, we see Chu who is a villain hitter, who chants curses and hits paper effigies of people for a fee during the Jingji period. Her customers come to her with the names, photographs, and personal belongings of people they want to curse. Once a wealthy woman visits her and gives her a photo and says this woman snatched her son and asks her to beat them all. She starts talking bad about her daughter-in-law and says that her son totally changed after marrying her. Chu then starts beating their photo while cursing them. The woman then asks her to beat her to Miss Gary, to which Chu says the baby is innocent but then she agrees for a fee of $300. Now later a strange girl comes to Chu's shop, and Chu asks her to come tomorrow. But when she sees her one Chu is missing, she gets scared and agrees to the last beating of the day. Chu asks the name of the person she wants to beat, to which she says she wants to beat four people. 
three men and one woman, and she will beat them herself. Chu hands her the shoe and starts cursing the person. But soon she realizes that she is the ghost of a woman raped and murdered by three men, of whom one is Chu's son. She gives her shoe back and asks her to put it back on and go to reincarnate. But the girl starts beating paper effigies with her shoe. Then in a flashback, we see that Chu had witnessed her son and his two accomplices kidnapping the woman into a car, but had turned a deaf ear to the woman's cries for help. Now that girl haunts one of the three men and kills him, after which she kills the other man by throwing him down from the roof. We then see Chu's son with his family and Chu tries to call him to warn him. But before that, the ghost of that girl reaches there. Chu son then comes out of the lift but his wife and son cannot come out, and Chu asks his son not to come out of the building. But before he could understand anything, a car crashes on the road, causing a pole to break and enters directly into his chest. And in the end, Chu also meets with an accident and gets badly injured being buried under a car. She begs that girl to let her die instead of his son. But instead, the girl saves Chu's life and leaves there. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.